Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, would you please welcome to the Friday Night Rock Show Sir Richard Drummy of Go West. Hello, Richard. How are you? Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Just making up my own applause there, Stu. I've learned to do that over the years, mate. Nice one. Um, right, I'm going to kick off this interview by taking you right back. Would you please tell me all about a band called Free Agent? Oh, my word. Blimey, you've been delving, haven't you? Uh, Free Agent was a band I was in when I was probably 15 or 16 um, in the um, Twickenham area of the country. Um, uh, yeah, we did quite well. I mean, I was I, I was a social sec at my at my college stroke school, whatever you like to call it. So I, I learned how to promote gigs, and we ended up playing uh, quite a large gig at the, the Winning Post um, in Twickenham, which you know used to have people like Thin Lizzy playing at it as well. Um, and um, it got reviewed, and uh, Peter Cox um, of Go West fame um, read the review in the local paper. His band sounded like Free. And he thought, well, hang on, there's another band that must like Free. Um, and somehow contacted me and said, and I said, well, look, we're rehearsing tonight if you want to come and come along and see us. Um, basically, he was after nicking our drummer because he didn't think his drummer was, um, well, let's put it this way, he did, was looking to nick our drummer. Uh, came along to the rehearsal, sat through our rubbish for an hour and a half, and uh, <laughs> just, as, just as he was about to leave, and this is how life can can turn on a sixpence like Wayne Rooney um, uh, I said to him do you have a tape of, of, of your band um, just being polite as, as you do and of course he did as we all did back then he gave me this tape I took it home stuck it in the cassette player and heard his voice and just thought this guy's incredible in fact I thought the whole band was fantastic so I called him up, or I think, I, I, you know, back then people were in the phone book. <laughs> so I, I searched him uh, out, and um, we became friends. So, yeah, fortunately, through Free Agent, through that name, um, uh, this band, you know, Go West, uh, happened eventually. Now, when Go West started, um, at what stage did you realise that you could actually get some of the best musicians in the world to play with you and Peter? Um, being quite honest with you, probably at the, uh, the point that we asked Al Murphy to be in the band, <laughs> because Al was the ticket to, to all of that. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, Al Alan no longer with us, as, as, as I know you know, Stu, I mean, fantastic uh, guitarist, absolutely brilliant guy. I would call um, him an innovator. Yeah, I mean, there was no one like him, really. Uh, well, some say some would say Alan Holdsworth played a little bit like Alan, and some would say Alan played a little bit like Alan Holdsworth, probably Alan Holdsworth, actually. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, the, he, he was brilliant. He, uh, people, pe for people who don't know him, mean, he was also in Level 42 for a while, did a lot of the guitar on Kate Bush's stuff, and he played the guitar in a very singular style with a tremolo arm, lots of bending and almost violin-like, but he could also rock. Um, and he came in via a band called The Quick that we worked with, uh, and we loved him and just asked him if he'd be in the band. And, of course, at that stage, he was playing in a band called SFX with Tony Beard and Richard Cottle, um, uh, you know, and Felix Krish, some of the best players in the country. And so I think the fact that he was there meant that these people, you know, he gave us the credibility for these people. And, and plus the fact, just to give ourselves a little bit of kudos here, uh, people did like what we were doing. Um, we, it's always been the case with us. The, the crowd has kind of been, you know, quite a lot of musos involved. You know, we've had Robert Palmer and David Sanctious and Jeff Beck coming along to shows, um, mainly to see Al. <laughs> it's not too hard, but yeah. Well, when I saw Go West in the 80s, um, I saw you twice at Hammersmith. Um, and the first time I saw you, Pino Palladino was in the front row watching you. Yeah, well, that's that, that, that again, you know, fantastic. I mean, although Pino had, we knew Pino, he played on the record. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I've always worked to you on a basis, if you don't ask, you don't get. So, you know, I mean, I've always been like that. And, and, and I just said, you know, let's get Pino to play on the album. I'll, I'll give him a call. Uh, and we got his number from somewhere and I phoned him up, I think. And, and he said, yeah, sure. Um, same thing, we were in L.A. when we did um, One Way Street uh, for the Rocky IV soundtrack. And I saw that Sting was in town, and I said to the lads, well, let's get Branford Masalis to do the sax solo, and they all fell about laughing. <laughs> and I said, well, I'll phone him up. I said, he's bound to be staying at the Chateau Marmont, which, of course, uh, he, he was. And I just got through to his room, and he said, yeah, I'll come down, man. And 
he was down the studio within an hour and a half. And uh, there's a bit of advice for everyone in life, you know. If you if you don't ask, you're never going to get what you want, are you? That's right. And if you ask enough, someone's going to say yes. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's a different approach. <laughs> that, that's in other areas. Yeah, go on, mate. Right, Richard, when I saw you with Go West... Um, well, I was blown away, to be honest, by the standard of musicianship. Um, I was in the, the front row of the balcony, and when you'd played Hideaway, I nearly fell off the balcony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I am, like yourself, a huge fan of, or would you like to tell us? Well, to, Mr. Todd Rundgren, of course. Um, yeah, I've always been a massive fan of Todd. Um, if you ask me my, you know, two favourite uh, all-time people, then I would say head boy is Todd Rundgren and head girl is Joni Mitchell. Um, I heard Todd first at some gig at the Roundhouse uh, coming over the PA before Argent came on, believe it or not, and I just ran to the guy playing the music and said, who's that? And I've just been locked in ever since. Um, and to see Todd live as well, I mean, he's, he's just, he's, he's like a backroom boy. A lot of people go, Todd who, Todd who, but they don't understand. But he's been such an influence um, over the years. He produced Bat Out of Hell. He produced some of the Hall and Oates albums, but more recently, um, I, oh, I can't remember who they are now. Is it? It's not Metronomy, is it? But one of the more recent bands, um, oh, I can't believe I can't remember that. But uh, you know, he, he's, he's had a, an influence to this day on the new electric, uh, you know, sort of more electronica bands that are kicking around. Uh, absolutely brilliant, Todd Rungan. Go, go and go and check him out, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely. Uh, bad news is I don't. Th I think he might not ever tour again because. Um, well, he said so himself. He's 63 now. He's getting mm. too old for the travelling. And when you live in Hawaii, that's a, a pretty daft place to start a tour from, really, because you've got several hours flight before you can even meet up with the rest of the band. But, yeah, um, he's about three hours from LA there. I, I went to Hawaii once. Um, yeah, well, that's very sad news, because it means people won't get to see him. Um, but... You know, it is, yeah, I was going to say stuff's out on DVD, but it's not the same thing. I mean, anyone who's ever been to a Todd gig, there's, I hate to be all hippie about it, but there's definitely love in the air. There's this kind of, uh, I remember, especially, I mean, I've seen him, pff, seen him six or seven times now, and I saw him at Hammersmith, um, at the Carling Labatt's Hammersmith HMV Odeon Apollo, as we like to call it now. It's been renamed so no, many times. No, Richard, it's still Hammersmith Odeon, and it yes, always will you. be. Well, I saw, I mean, not wishing to show my age here, but I mean, I saw that, that uh, what, Mr. Springsteen there when he first came over, and that was a gig to remember. And talking of sitting in the, uh, sitting in the front row of the, the balcony, I think the last time I was, oh no, the last time I had this was Steely Dan, but before that, I was in the front row of the balcony to see the white stripes with my kids. Um, I hate to say it, but I had, <laughs> I had tickets for Coldplay, and then I thought, and I do like Coldplay, don't get me wrong, but I thought, do my kids want to go through life saying my first gig was Coldplay? So uh, I didn't go to that gig. <laughs> I sent the tickets back, and I went to see the White Stripes instead. So that's my kids' uh, first proper proper rock gig. I Fantastic. think you did the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was great, that gig. And I'm so glad I was in the balcony because they took the seats out downstairs, and it was, just became the world's biggest mosh pit. <laughs> right, Richard, would you um, tell us a bit about... Cambodia. Yeah, uh, well, actually, funny enough, that ties in with Todd because the last time Todd played here was on the third of, it was either, yeah, third of October this year down down at the Jazz Cafe. Yeah, we were there. Yeah, oh, well, well done, man, well done. Well, I couldn't go because I was leaving at the crack of early the next day to go to Cambodia um, on a charity track. Um, this is quite long winded, so I'll keep it keep it quick. I've been on four of them now. Um, Two of them with with um, with Tony Hadley and Martin Fry, and coupled just with Martin Fry from ABC, and obviously Tony from Spandau. Um, it's for a charity called Action Medical Research, who are great charity. Came up with the cure for polio, um, ultrasound, so we can all see our kids before they're born, and and uh, the hip replacements that we will both need sometimes, Stuart, if we dance like we do. Uh, with uh, the guitar, you know about the impact jumping, don't you? Impact Jumping, a yeah. great name for a band, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, um, I, I, I'm not being noble about it. I mean, basically, my manager phoned up and said, do you want to go on a trek to Venezuela with Tony and Martin? And I said, oh, yes, please. And he said, no, hold on a minute, Rick. I haven't finished yet. It's for charity. And I said, yeah, that's good, too. Uh, but over the years, we've raised over a million pounds for them now. Uh, and they're, they're fantastic. I mean, if you've got a 
spare couple of quid, get on, get online, Action Medical Research, AMR, give it to them because they're doing some fantastic work at the moment with um, uh, it, doing research into um, illnesses, very rare illnesses that children have that just don't fall under the remit of any other charity. So these kids are just, you know, left on their own, really. So uh, fantastic. Give them some money. It's a great thing you're doing there, Richard. Well, like I say, Stu, you know, please, it's not a... Like, you know, I, I would have done it for the fun of it. So, you know, it's, but it's nice, as I say, a million pounds gone to actually medical research. Uh, yeah, but we have a lot of fun with that. The one question I ask every rock star, Richard. Yeah. What's your favourite fish? Fish? Yes. What, you mean to eat or to catch? <laughs> Either or. <laughs> uh, well, I don't fish, of course, Stu, because I'm in the rock business and we don't do things like that. Um, <laughs> Is that a little crack at Roger Daltrey there? <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 have, I have had a rod in my hand over the years, uh, if you'll excuse the expression. <laughs> that came out all wrong, didn't it? Oh, dear, oh, dear. Son, Richard says he's had a rod in his hand. <laughs> um, my favourite fish to eat? Oh, I don't know. Probably sea bass, actually. That's, that's the one that I cook the most at home. And Why do you, you ask that question? I, don't, um, I think it's just quite funny. And okay. it, it throws people out the window. <laughs> Funnily enough, Peter Cox said sea bass as well. Yeah, did he? Well, that's because I've cooked it for him, you see. And so did Tony Hadley. Oh, Tony Hadley cooked sea bass. Obviously, Pete, Pete is, 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 is wound by, by other musicians with their <laughs> sea bass. It's very, very Vic Reeves, that, actually, isn't it? <laughs> now, Richard, yes. um, 21st of December, O2 Academy in Birmingham. Um, I want everyone to get down to this one. What can we expect from you? You want West? everyone to get oh, down yeah. to it. Oh, yeah, and we um, will do our best to get them to bums on seats, matey. Yeah, fantastic. Well, there's no seats there, actually, so no, no. <laughs> it, it, it's up, up and jumping, mate. Uh, oh, no. Well, there are some seats. Don't, don't let them put you off. We'll get a seat for you if you need one. Yeah, we, we both <laughs> need one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What can you expect? Yeah. Uh, well, we always, you know, anyone who's seen us before knows, you know, we don't just, you know, stick the set list up on the wall from last time and off we go. Um, obviously, it's called the 3D Tour, so we'll be doing um, quite a chunk of uh, our new album, 3D. But having said that, there are only eight songs on that so far because it's a work in progress. So I think, we're doing, I think we're doing about five songs from the new album. So don't be frightened. It's not going to be like... I love those words when you go to a gig and they say, we are now going to play our new album in its entirety. And you go, oh, no, please don't do that. And everyone um, walks out. Yeah, so we'll be doing, um, we'll be doing a few off of 3D. Uh, all the hits will be there because, uh, to be honest with you, Stu, we haven't got so many that we can't squeeze them into the show. Oh, I think you've got a good show there. Richard, thank you very much for this interview. No worries, Stu. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Drummy.